Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to chapter 3 of the series. In chapter 2, we learn quite a bit about semiconductor physics. In this chapter 3, we are going to learn how we can combine a p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductor to form what is called a p-n junction. In this particular video, we are going to introduce an important concept called drift and diffusion currents. And before I start, I would like to thank RS Grassroots Education for sponsoring this video. You can find written versions of my videos under the Design Spark website, links down in the description box. In these articles, I put down links to further reference materials for your further reading. These materials are the ones that I previously used before while I was learning about solar cells, so rest assured that they are good ones. And now, there's nothing left to do but to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. P-N junction diode is simply just a physical combination of both P and N-type materials. It is widely used in the semiconductor industry, for example, in logic gates, mainly to allow current to flow in only one direction. This also allows application in LEDs and solar cells, which is why in order to understand how solar cell works, we need to first understand P-N junction diodes. The first question that we usually want to ask is that, how does the band diagram of a p-n junction look like? Well, logic tells us that it somehow must be a combination of the band diagrams for both p- and n-type materials. Remember, for a p-type semiconductor, the Fermi level is closer to the valence band, and for n-type material, the Fermi level is closer to the conduction band. So, the question really is, what happens if you combine these two materials together? How would the conduction and valence bands of these two materials connect together? We usually follow a simple process to draw the energy band diagram of p-n junctions. First, in equilibrium, which means when current is not flowing, the Fermi level for both p- and n-type materials must be at the same level. So we start with the Fermi level as a straight line. Next, we draw the p-type valence band and n-type conduction band. Now we know that for p-type, the Fermi level is closer to the valence band, and for n-type, the Fermi level is closer to the conduction band. Finally, we draw the rest of the bands according to the band gap of the semiconductor. Now, the interesting part is what happens in the middle at the junction. We usually call that the depletion region. At the depletion region, the bands bend and simply smoothly transition between the P and N type. The bands bend in the middle due to an electric field in the depletion region. Away from the junction, the bands do not know that there is a junction and hence remains flat. Now, some of you may wonder, why is the conduction and valence bands for both P and N type materials not at the same energy level? Well, remember that these two semiconductors are doped. For P side, a portion of the initial silicon atoms have been replaced by an element which has three valence electrons, like boron. Because boron has a lower electronegativity than silicon, the average electronegativity of the entire crystal lattice reduces, shifting the bands upwards. For n-type materials, the opposite happens, which is why the bands shift downwards. I want to take a very visual and intuitive approach to explain how electrons and holes flow in the p-n junction. We can imagine the p-n junction as a box with the p side containing holes and the n side containing electrons, with a divider in between to separate them. For now, the p-side holes still do not know the existence of the n-side electrons. But what do you think will happen once we remove the divider? We get something like this. Removing the divider will create a flow of holes from the p-side to the n-side, 
um, flow of electrons from the N side to the P side. Eventually, the electrons and holes fully mix into a homogeneous mixture. The driving force for this flow is because there are different concentrations of electrons and holes on both sides. We call the flow of electrons and holes due to a difference in concentration, diffusion. The flow of electrons and holes adds up and forms a current called diffusion current. Remember, the direction of diffusion current, like all traditional current, should be the opposite of the electron direction, which is from the P side to the N side. Now, I have to confess, this is not the entire picture. In reality, the electrons and holes do not fully mix. Well, don't get me wrong, there is still some diffusion current, and the electrons and holes do want to mix by diffusion. But there is some sort of a mysterious current counteracting this diffusion current, such that the electrons and holes cannot fully mix. In fact, this mysterious current completely cancels out the diffusion current, such that the net current is zero. This is another type of current that happens in semiconductors called drift current. To understand this, let us take a snapshot at what happens very early before the electrons and holes fully mix. So now, I start by removing the divider. And the electrons and holes start to mix, right? Pause! At this particular instant, I would have a bit of holes on the N side near the junction, and a bit of electrons at the P side near the junction. What we have done is that we created a negatively charged region at the P side and a positively charged region at the N side. This creates a tiny electric field pointing from the N side to the P side. The width where this electric field takes place is the width of the so-called depletion region. This electric field exerts a force to pull the electrons in the negatively charged region of the depletion region back to the N side, while the same electric field also exerts a force to pull the holes in the positively charged region of the depletion region back to the P side. The force due to this electric field is called drift, which prevents further diffusion from happening. The movement of electrons and holes due to this electric field is called drift current. Again, the drift current is opposite to the direction of electron flow, and is the result of the addition of both electron and hole drift. Now, if we present this on an energy band diagram, we have a diffusion current from the P side to the N side, and a drift current from the N side to the P side. These two currents eventually cancel out each other, resulting in zero current flow, which means the PN junction is now at equilibrium. That's it guys for chapter 3.0. In this video, we introduce what are PN junctions and the concept of drift and diffusion. In the next video, which is chapter 3.1, we are going to learn the famous forward and reverse bias in a PN junction and also introduce the very important IV curve. Take care and goodbye.